So if you have seen yesterday's class, so we were talking about uh, JDK folder, right? We were talking about JDK folder. So in that, I told you like there are three subfolders which we need to concentrate. Among this lib folder we have seen, basically lib folder is nothing but library folder which is having a collection of APIs. APIs are nothing but jars, which have collection again, which are having collection of packages, and packages are having collection of, uh, are co have collection of classes and interfaces. And classes are collect having cl collection of variables and methods. Interfaces, collection of fields and constants. Fields are constants and abstract methods. That all we are going to learn slowly when we start OOPS concept. So this is so far we have covered. Now we'll move on to the next, next, uh, next folder, next subfolder in JDK that is nothing but bin folder. Okay, that is nothing but bin folder. Now question. So you may already have this question like bin folder is having some importance, right? Correct. You are correct because when we have set the path, if you see day one, I told you like when we are setting the path not in day one i think in day two itself i told you uh, like we have two variables need to set to configure your java and just now i have troubleshooted for jagadish as well right so we have put one variable called java home where it uh, where the location till the jdk but we have put something else called in path variable till bin folder that means bin folder has its own importance okay, why it is so let us see bin folder first of all. How to see that? You should go to C drive, program files. So when you install JDK, you will have a J Java folder, okay, getting created. Inside Java folder, you will have you will have JDK. Okay, I'm going inside JDK. This, okay. So here you can see lib folder, bin folder, JRE folder. Now I'm going to see bin folder. If you see bin folder, so this bin folder having what? There are no jars. What it is consists of? All our application. Application means what? EXE file. Right click. Right click and see the properties of each. It will be like .exe. Okay. It will be like .exe file. Okay. If you see here. So it will be like .exe file. Bin folders. Okay. Not bin folder. Let me just check. Right click this one. Properties. See here. This is the exe file. Okay. So applet viewer, this is one exe file. If you see each and everything are exe file. Applications are not nothing but exe files. Okay. <clears throat> what is the purpose of this one? So bin folder is also called as tools folder. Okay. Bin. Sorry, there is some problem with my mouse. Okay. Bin folder is also called as tools folder. Okay, tools folder. Why tools? Sir? These are important. These are the tools or applications which we are going to use it in our. Okay. So in our uh, Java maintenance. Okay, Java maintenance we are going to use it. So on day three, let me just write. Sorry, told you. So now, so tools folder is also called as what is happening to my keyboard. Okay, fine. Now, so JDK, uh, sorry, bin folder is also called tools folder. Tools folder, basically it will be having all the tools now. So let me go back again to see. Okay, bin folder, see. You can see many things here. Actually, I was just now in the in the beginning I, when I was troubleshooting Jagadish uh, system, I was giving this something command like this, right? I have given just something like Java space. I have given something like Java space hyphen version. So here Java is the application or the command which is present here, which is present here. Okay. So if I want to run this Java, okay java command then i should tell the operating system like java is present in this path that's the reason we have 
we have during configuration we have given path till bin folder that is the reason now question you may have sir are we going to use only java command no we are going to use other commands also internally or externally let's say java c java c for compiler okay it's a compiler okay it's a compiler you can just see for example now okay java c okay java c is a compiler okay if you see java c hyphen version you will see the compiler version of java so java is having some compiler like this okay it is going to give you answer something like j java 1.8 something like that what happened okay let me close it and open one more time so command prompt you can give from anywhere java c space hyphen version okay it is taking time for well, no problem and one more see here it has telling you like java compiler is 1.8.0241 that is a compiler that is a compiler like that so like this there are different tools there okay for example now if you want to see what are all the packages that are there in java.io okay for example you need to see the java package so you have something called java packager just drag it and drop it here otherwise you can just uh, otherwise you can just give it these are the tools just uh, for the sake of understanding and telling java packager right packager space java this is one package java.io it will give you the list of all the classes all those things in java.io package okay so my system is going a bit slow <clears throat> so anyway meanwhile i will tell you like like this, there are different uh, different tools in this bin folder but now question is sir are we going to use all the tools no we will be mostly using three tools what are those so okay i think uh, that command is different instead of java packager i need to use java p i think so java p space uh, this is mainly for package viewer you can just give the package name java space i think this is the command let's see okay like this there are different things you may not use all okay class okay i need to give class for example is having java.io is having something called uh input stream class okay okay java.io you can write like input stream let's say yes it is telling like input stream class so these are the methods which are present inside the input stream class something like that no need to worry about all these methods also uh, all these methods or all these commands we are not going to use them only three commands we are going to use in bin folder so in initial stage we'll, we are going to use java c this is for compilation for compiling java program for compiling java program okay and then one more thing we are going to use java this is for running running your java program okay your java program. so apart from this we are going to use something called jar not now during grid selenium grid that is our okay that will cover after frame during framework okay so jar to extract uh, basically to run your jar files directly if you have java you can just run it okay like this among these this only these two we are going to use so that's the reason bin folder is very important you are going to use those tools so without your knowledge so that's the reason you need to give the path till bin folder okay you need to give the path till bin folder that's important fine so any questions so far any questions okay fine good so that is about bin. yeah yes jagadish I'm saying, yeah, we're good. I'm good. Okay, fine. Thank you. Fine. 
so now uh, we will see about one more uh, folder we are talking about jre this is very important to the heart of this jdk i can say okay jre basically called as the name itself called java runtime environment it is going to create some environment to run the java file okay runtime environment environment okay fine java runtime environment basically what this what this jre is going to do so it is going to do few things okay the way some pre execution of code okay pre execution of code is done here pre execution what do you mean by pre execution that we are going to see later of code is done a question is who is going to activate this jre who is going to activate this jre so you already seen java tool right java tool which is there in bin folder this is going to activate okay your jre so activate jre so jre will will once you use the java tool command java command then only jre comes into picture and will run your java program that's what you need to know fine apart from this um, it will be running it will be collecting collecting information collecting info about current running mission current running mission why sir why current running mission because i told you like uh, your java program can run in mac os can run in linux can run in solaris can run in windows how it is running the same program in different architecture different os how it is doing that so it is doing according to okay according to that environment it is collecting the environment and it is acting accordingly okay it is acting accordingly you got it like so basically uh, we are going to see what is bytecode now but i am just giving a statement like it is going to convert your dot class files what is class file we are going to see very shortly it is going to convert your class file sorry class file class file basically it's nothing but bytecode okay and i told you during our uh, day one session uh, features of java when i was discussing features of java i told you something like this so you have okay i given some picture maybe somewhere you try cosmic i told you something like this okay okay so when you run java file you will be getting a class file whereas in c language you will be directly getting exe file here you will not get exe file but you will get a class file that class file is nothing but byte code format not mission code okay but operating systems whether it's a windows or anything will understand mission code only not your byte code okay not your byte code. so now who is going to convert this byte code because if it is a byte code no one can understand then who is going to convert jre okay jre is going to convert so one more thing that jre is going to do is it is going to convert your byte code so sorry uh, by code to okay local understandable code local understandable code understandable uh, code or mission code okay and local understandable code that's it like this it is going to do few things and one more very very important is there is a subordinate called jvm java virtual mission okay so for that it is going to give implementation implementation now question you may have implementation for jvm for jvm now question you may have is what is this jvm so jvm stands for java virtual mission okay the name itself says it is virtual you don't see it it is don't physically exist it comes and goes that way okay that way java virtual mission so basically what this jvm consists of jvm consists of something called abstract abstract task so abstract task means means tasks okay having no body having no body that means having no body it is something like task is there but no don't know how to perform that task for example now if you are a kid you don't know how to eat your parents are telling like this is the way to eat okay like someone is is implementing something so that you can do you can perform right in the same way jvm is a virtual mission it is having task okay eat is the thing but how to eat it doesn't know 
for example let's say now you are in a okay now you are in home you are eating like what how you like but let's say you are going for a client lunch okay uh, you're going for, for a lunch with a client then your manager will be telling you like you need to eat this way you should just you need to put your okay, napkin on your lap and you should use fork and spoons not to eat with hand like that he's telling you so basically it is something task but you are performing according to the environment right so like this jvm is having the task to perform but how to perform those will be given by j or e okay so jvm is a subordinate of that okay fine so that's that's what jvr jre will do but now we will look into this interesting part that is nothing but jvm okay jvm so as a automation engineer or a developer you should know few things this these are the things most people won't teach but these are very important things to understand java easily if you understand this stuff then java will really become easy because you will not just blindly writing the programs running the programs you will know like if there is some problem how to debug what may be the reason that all the things you will get to know from here okay fine so jvm as i told you it's a subordinate of jre and it will have three sub components okay three sub components one is called clss the other is called ee execution engine the third one is called gc garbage collector okay so i'm going to write something here class loader okay subsystem subsystem okay fine so this is class loader subsystem can just i can make this way and this is nothing but execution engine okay execution engine and third one is garbage collector okay garbage collector please concentrate these are the few important things uh, but if you understand this one properly then you are prop i mean java programming becomes easier uh, so here again execution engine is having two things one is interpreter okay and let me write here one is interpreter okay and the other one is called zip compiler zip compiler zip compiler that is nothing but just in time compiler oh let's explain those things later now what this class loader subsystem is going to do basically this is going to do three things one is called initialization okay uh, oh, sorry one is called loading the name itself says load loading okay what it is going to load i will uh, i will explain very shortly loading the second one is called linking the third one is called initialization initial initialization okay initialization. these are the three things that will be performed by jvm uh, by sub sub component called class loader subsystem loading in the sense okay loading in the sense you need to load your class file because for example now let's see uh, i'm writing a program now, okay i'm going to write a program here you don't have any program here right so let me open a notepad you can open a you can write java program anywhere just you need to save something with dot java extension let me write some program called public hello this is our program and uh, don't worry about the syntax what is public what is hello sir all those things but we'll be discussing very shortly i'm i'm writing some program for public static void main something called string args okay string args i'm going to write the body of the method where i'm just going to print hello world or something like that. very simple statement okay so system dot out dot print and don't worry what is system what is printer and don't get panic i'm going to explain in detail slowly once we progress our course okay hello world okay hello world. very simple okay. now this one i'm going to store somewhere in our folder okay in our save i'm going to save it in uh here okay in cosmic 9 pm jan 20 i will save with the name called hello because class name is hello i will save this file name also with java dot java so now if you just see here if you close and see here okay uh, let me put this way the, the view in this way uh, list see here in this list format 
you have only one hello that is java let me put it in detail so that we can get so hello is only one file now which is having java okay which is having which is java file okay fine so let me compile this one okay because as i told you i can't directly print hello i need to compile this file okay what i'm going to give if we want to compile the file if you want to compile the file you need to write the java c command you need to use java c tool or command which is present in bin folder java c space the syntax is something like class name or file name dot java if you if you do this way just care, carefully observe the back end sorry the background so you will get one more file called hello which is a class file let me hit enter now let me hit enter if there is errors it will show errors now yes it is showing errors like there is something like uh some brace is missing okay so hello okay let me just check it double click what is the problem public sorry class i mean i am missed something called class here let me save save it now close it and again rerun the file now just clear screen cls again i am running java c space hello.java let me double now click it you can see if it is see here it is successful otherwise it have given some error it is prompting that means it is successful and in the behind you can see there is a one more file got created which is called class file that's what i told you when you have something called sample.java anything if you compile you will get one more file called class file okay this is class file. this is byte code just double click you can't understand this one this symbols all this thing this is a byte code okay fine so now you need to uh, execute this file class file that means you need to load the class file so to loading class file this class loader subsystem will come into picture loading means that is the load okay and not only that loading the, not only the file that you want to run is getting loaded tomorrow if you see tomorrow if there is some other file you need for example now let's say i want to I want to take some value. Sorry, where is this? For example, let's say if I want to normally you might have seen in C language we are writing hash include hash td where std io dot h something like that. Basically, it is going to load the header files. Okay. In the same way, for example, let's say I want to take input from the console. Okay. There is something called scanner class, something sc equal to new scanner of let's say this is the like scan okay system dot in so that means i'm going to take from console don't worry about the syntax we'll learn later we are just concentrating on loading loading what is linking all those things. so sc dot next int okay next int so this is the command this is a method so i'm going to go and write some int x is equal to i will store in this and I'm going to print the value of x so like this okay so print the value of x something like this don't worry about this thing just concentrate now so now if you see here if you write something like scanner which is a new class then you need to import that class scanner is basically present in something called import java is a package in that there is a package called util dot scanner okay so like this you need to save now you need to save this file and you need to recompile it otherwise you will get you will get okay you need to recompile it fine if there is error it will show no errors so it is recompiled now so basically what happened here is it now i am going to run this program java space hello okay just hello you will see now it is going to prompt because it is going to scan some value let me give some 100 here click enter it will is going to print like hello world 100 okay so which means what here so it is loading not only you are when you give java command your jvm is going to come into picture jr is coming into picture means jvm also is going to come into picture and it is going to load your hello okay hello dot class file basically this is a class file so it is going to load hello dot class file not only hello dot class file it is going to load scanner class also because you are using scanner class also in your program okay 
don't think like only this class is loading no you are loading this because you are going to use some method from the scanner class called next int okay that, that way fine so that's the meaning of loading so loading means not only that class what are all the classes that you are going to use in the program all those things that class loader subsystem is going to load then question what is linking set linking means now if you observe scanner class scanner class will have many many things okay for example now let me show you uh, java p space java dot util dot okay scanner it will print all the it will print all the methods in the scanner see here this many methods are there okay this many methods are there in scanner class if you see here okay okay java dot scanner all these things regex something like next shot next int has next int next int we i have used this one now next int okay next int. so now there is no need to link everyone just you are using next int so it should link only this method not all the methods so the linking process also will be done by means of class load or subsystem okay that's the meaning of linking okay linking so here if you see here there is one next int method there is one more print ln method all these are getting linked who is going to link because you are using it you are not writing the code for it you are just using the code written by java people next int was written by java people you are just using it. so now who is going to link uh so someone having question sorry someone shruti uh what about others are you able to hear me jagadish can you please confirm yeah I, I can hear you sir i can hear you okay what about venkat yes sir yes sir yes sir okay 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 thank you uh, one more who is this uh, jayashree are you able to yeah yeah sir it's audible okay thank you shruti could you please check your audio shruti is it audible now okay shruti can you please confirm is it audible Okay. Uh, let me ping her. Is it audible now? Maybe some problem with her audio, I believe, because uh, you three people are able to hear me. So maybe she need to. Are you people connected using mobile or PC or laptop? Laptop. Okay, laptop. 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 Okay. So maybe that 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 may be one reason I believe because sometimes. It happens that way. Okay, I think Shruti is having some problem. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay that might be reason okay because i think other people have connected so Okay. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, fine. Let, let's continue. Well, because anyway, recording is there, and uh, uh, for today, I think they can they will share and they can just uh, go through it. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. okay, fine. So now what I mean to say here is like linking is that one. Okay. Now question is what is initialization? That initialization concept we are going to see. For example, now let me write something called static int x. Okay, index. And if, and if I print something like, for example, not index y. Okay, y. And if I am going to print the value of y. Okay, print the value of y okay it will print me zero okay let me run this one let me first compile it let me compile it so compilation is nothing but java c command space file name or class name dot java okay it will compile and to run the java file you need to use java space file name only no extensions okay now it is prompting let me give 200 and it is giving me hello world 200 and x value as 200 y value as 0. The question is I haven't declared anything for y. Okay, but how y is getting value 0? I have initialized x with 100. I have initialized x with 100 during runtime as uh, so 200, but I haven't declared any value or uh, sorry, I haven't initialized any value for y, but it is giving 0. How, how who is going to give zero that value jvm jvm's class loader subsystem is going to give or initialize the value okay got it now so these are the three components uh, sorry three functions of class loader subsystem one is loading the other one is linking the third one is initialization okay these are the things that you need to know from this okay fine that is about class loader subsystem any questions so far any questions No questions fine so now let me talk about interpreter interpreter is something which converts uh basically if you take any okay if you take any language that comes under any three of three categories it can be an interpreter compiler or it can be assembler okay these are the three categories that uh, falls into uh, compilation okay so now um java is a purely interpreter compiler plus interpreter language i can say okay so interpreter in the sense so whenever you execute a program for example you have the java file now it is going to see here, here one by one statement it is going to see and convert and it is going to run that's the meaning of interpreter it is something like let's say a uh, prime minister modi is talking to some uh, chinese prime minister or someone okay let's say Prime Minister Modi doesn't know Chinese, and the Prime Minister of China also doesn't know Hindi or English. Let's say, then there will be some okay translator or converter. I can say who is sitting behind. Mostly a lady will be sitting behind Modi, and she will be explaining to him whatever he speaks in uh, Chinese to uh, Hindi, uh, like that. Okay, so it is something like because byte code you have. So this is bytecode and you need to run the bytecode. So you need to execute the bytecode. Bytecode can't understand. Modi can't understand Chinese directly. That's the reason. So here there is an uh, there is an interpreter, a translator, how she's sitting behind Modi who translates Chinese to Hindi. Okay, like that. Interpreter component will be converting, converting your bytecode into, into mission code or the local understandable code so that your operating system can execute your statement now how it is converting sir compiler means whole code will be just if it, if a language is pure compiler dependent then whole program will be converted into converted only once but whereas interpreter means it will be converting line by line of code statement by statement that's the meaning of interpreter okay fine so that is interpreter now question you have you may have what is zip compiler sir zip compiler is nothing but just in time compiler okay just in time compiler so zip compiler means just in time okay 
is it means just in time so this compiler will come into picture only uh, when you have something called branching statements okay branching operation this will come into picture when you have branching okay branching uh, operations okay or looping operation branching or iterative iterative code you have when you have branching code or iterative code like while loop like while loop we'll see what is while loop all those things like for loop like do while loop something like that okay so when you have this one will then this will come into picture a question like how it is going to help you what is the importance of this one in java do other other languages also have the zip compiler no java is only having zip compiler just in time component so basically now for example let's say um for example now you are writing some code if you don't understand uh, just uh, think like you need to iterate five times you need to run some code five times then you will use something like for loop like this one i will just write int i equal to one i less than okay less than or equal to five i plus plus okay i plus plus so if you don't understand no problem we'll go in uh, slowly when we start loops but now just i'm telling like so the, basically i am writing something like print hello something like that. print print hello print hello this is not a java syntax i'm just writing simple for loop okay okay print f hello let's say c language only or c language we have the meaning is the output will be output will be hello 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 like five times it will be printing like hello 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 like this it is printing okay okay hello 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 like that it is printing going to print five times okay now question is what happens internally is basically i is initialized to one okay it will check like i less than i less, less than five this condition is going to check okay and then so all those things so here basically what happens you know there will be main memory so main memory will come into picture and this this will be stored in main memory and then converted into stack into it, it it goes into stack sorry sorry it goes into stack and then it is going to execute execute and it is going to give output output and it is going to give memory deallocation memory deallocation like this it is going to work okay so basically if you think like this part is going to have one milliseconds of time okay if it is having one millisecond and this is having one millisecond this is having one millisecond this is taking one millisecond and totally how many time how many milliseconds it runs for five times okay it runs for five times now because every time it went to deallocate it want to allocate okay like this it need to do five times okay so that means 15 okay so totally 15 milliseconds of time totally 15 total 15 milliseconds so if we use if we use zit compiler zit compiler then there is an intelligent component of java where where there is no need for you to deallocate every time okay every time only one time main memory will come into picture and then stack when come into picture at the very beginning then your execution will be there only execution will be there output will be there that's it me memory deallocation will not be there okay zit compiler thinks cleverly no memory deallocation it will just overwrite things so now here now the thing is like here this is one millisecond one millisecond sorry one millisecond and this one is one millisecond like this it is going to happen okay sorry it is going to happen this way okay like this so this way it is going to happen okay so totally five times oh okay so this is one this is two this is three four and fifth the time okay and you will have last 
memory deallocation. Memory deallocation. So this will be one more millisecond. So now how many milliseconds now here? So totally five plus two, total seven milliseconds. So if you like this, so the performance will be very high. Total now here seven milliseconds. Like this. for example, I'm telling you, okay, like this. This is how Zit compiler is going to help you, okay. So ZIT compiler mainly comes into picture when you have branching statements. So that's the reason if you are branching statements, your ZIT compiler will be very, very fast. Okay. Your program will be running very fast. Okay. So that's the reason one of the features of Java. We have discussed seven features only. Java is simple, Java is uh, object oriented, uh, secure, robust, uh, object, uh, platform independent, portable, architecture neutral, seven only. Apart from that, I told you like Java is distributed, Java is networked, Java is highly performance. So high performance is because of this ZIT compiler. Okay, that is one feature of Java. Fine. But support ZIT compiler, no need to go in depth, just I'm giving the high level. Okay. And the third one, the third one interesting thing is GC. GC means garbage collector. So this is the third component of okay component of your JVM garbage collector basically what this is going to do the basically it is going to do memory deallocation the thing is like memory deallocation de allocation allocation so some thing is that memory deallocation <clears throat> so memory deallocation means uh, so it will be just like how the garbage collector for example now if you are in office you will be seeing like there will be people uh, who take the trash periodically right or who will wash who will clean the floor periodically so like that so if you have got like this periodic things if they find like something garbage there immediately if they are clean up then you will have everything neat or i can say in this case you are you will have always good memory management will be very easy okay so that is the one advantage of one advantage of garbage collector now question is so basically garbage collector will be having two two components one is the mark component the other one is sweep component so mark component basically basically identifies okay it identifies which are things which are which identifies items which are eligible for which are eligible for eligible for garbage which are eligible for garbage which are eligible for garbage okay or garbage sorry garbage and sweep component will cleans will cleans the memory means cleans the memory or delete delete the memory space that's it okay these are the two things so now question is sir do i need to call garbage collector externally no need when you give java command itself garbage collector will come into picture it will stay until the end of the program okay there is no need for you to call java garbage collector explicitly but if you want to call explicitly there is a way but there is no need but if you want to call you can call by means of these two system these two methods ja sorry gar garbage garbage system dot gc this is one method that you can call otherwise sorry. otherwise you can call something called runtime this is one more class which is having garbage gc method which calls garbage collector but to be frank to say there is no need to call garbage collector it will be behind always when you run the program when you give the java command it comes into picture it will be always active it will be finding for example now let's say you are writing some code for example let's say you are writing some code okay in this code let's say you're writing some code like this you're writing some code okay now you're writing some code this code this code like this okay so let's say this is the line number line number one let's say this is line number two and let's say line number three let's say line number three you have used something like int x is equal to 30 and let's say in line number line number 23 you have used int z equal to x plus y x plus y and after this one you never use let's say there are thousand lines of code you never used x after this one okay then there is no need to keep the space for x after 23 line okay so garbage collectors this mark component will identify like x is eligible for garbage and the sweep component will just clean the 
clean the space for x that's it okay so like that it is going to work got it now that's the reason java is having good memory management uh, that makes java is robust these are all the things so this is what they're mostly the theory part and a few practical things that we have seen for jdk so that's that so far we have covered till day three any questions so far so tomorrow onwards we are going to see uh variables in java java memory blocks all those things okay structure of java program uh we are going to see to from tomorrow so from tomorrow onwards very important class uh, not tomorrow tomorrow is saturday they will inform you whether we have class tomorrow or not okay uh, mostly monday to friday okay. so they will let you know anyway mr p will let you know. any questions before i wind up let me just stop the recording